Well, greetings everyone. It is Friday, April the 10th. This is our weekly fireside chat. As you can see, we're next to the fire. Even though it's April, it's 40 degrees out and you can feel it. I'm Pastor Tim Bushong from Syracuse Baptist Church. With me today is Floyd Farber. Floyd, good to see you. Uh, hang on. Let's make sure we're following the CDC guidelines. Uh, don't don't touch that in, man, because, oh, there's four feet. I think four will do. Anyway, good to see you. Yesterday was, uh, well, actually April 8th, was Rachel and Joseph's one-month anniversary. Was it really? Yeah, I can't believe it. <laughs> wow, that's gone by quick. Oh, uh, yeah. Also, since we've been kind of slowed down, and we'll ask Floyd what he's been doing. I just wanted to share some of the books I've been reading. Some I've been rereading, so I'm just kind of going over for the third and fourth time. Uh, one is by Sam Waldron, The Regulative Principle of the Church. Got this at the Founders Conference last May, and uh, Sam wasn't there, although he's known to frequent and haunt those kind of events. Um, and this will play into what we're talking about in a little bit. Uh, this one especially. Mm, 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 mm. You want to talk about swallowing the universe. Uh, Francis Nigel Lee, The Central Significance of Culture. Highly recommended. Thank you, Bill Yorka, for recommending it to me. Also, just a little leather-lunged, uh, iron-fisted post-millennialism for you. Greg Bonson's Victory in Jesus. Actually, this was, a, this was taken from a series of lectures that he had done. And I think, yeah, um, Robert Booth had edited them and put them together as a book. Very good. It's a great introduction. If, if you want to know what, you know, some of us crazy post-millennialists believe or why we believe it, this is a great starting point. It's not too complicated, not too deep. Uh, it just really gives you the basic, uh, basic framework. Yeah, I know I'll be loaning it to you. Well, that or my wife will see it in order right away. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon, here we come. Brought the 1689 Confession in case we needed it today. Another book I've been uh, I've been kind of using as my fun book. This is A Shepherd's Life by uh, W. H. Hudson. This was recommended to me by my friend Tim Bailey, and it's literally what shepherds do. And this would have been written about a hundred years ago. I'm kind of a nut for old books. I, I really enjoyed uh, Far From the Madding Crown by Thomas Hardy. This would have been about the same time period, the late 19th century, early 20th. And I, I like getting my head into a different time frame. People didn't have cell phones. Yeah. And it was before <laughs> both great wars, before the atomic age. And some of the observations are just wonderful, especially, and I like how those authors um, weren't afraid of stereotypes. I'll just leave it, leave it at that. <laughs> the other book, this is a, a daily read along with my Bible, The Preacher's Catechism, Lewis Allen. This is just excellent. Uh, Lewis takes the uh, Westminster Shorter Catechism and, and kind of adapts it to uh, one who is staying behind the pulpit on a weekly basis. And a lot of my friends like that. So uh, we met the other night, you and I, and Frank Stoffel is our other deacon. Um, you and your wife, Deb, came here, what, about a year and a half ago? Yeah. Uh, you found us online. Mm -hmm. You said, what in the world? And then you came and visited. Yep. What would you think? Well, we got here. Before we got here, we knew how you taught because we listened to you. That's Thank you, Internet. That's one of the reasons we came. Yeah. Because of the way you taught. And we come in and the people just welcomed us so well. Yeah. And before we left the church, we both just said, uh, we're home. <laughs> <laughs> well, now he's a deacon. And uh, I'll tell you, Frank, we're, Frank and Floyd both have done so much work. Um, whose idea was it originally to change our old... Wawasee Fishing uh, Cottage into a nice fellowship hall. Actually, it was both of us. Yeah. Frank 
was talking about that part of it, and, and I've made some suggestions of this part, and then we've kind of looked at it, and we said, wow, maybe we ought to try this. Why don't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it all went, and it well, just worked, you know, just... just oh, yeah, it's so much, so much nicer, and, you know, timing is everything. Well, yes. timing for Rachel's wedding was so good, so up to the date of the cutoff of travel with Joseph's parents and family all flowing in, flying in from Sweden. Oh, yeah, My goodness, just... So, yeah, but this time we got it all ready to go, got our TV monitor up there, we're ready to have some events, and then COVID-19, COVID sorry. <laughs> By the way, where did you find these uh, authentic Indiana hardwood barn beams for our mantle and lintels? I had talked to a friend that told me to, actually gave me the number, and I called the guy out here just south or north of us a little ways yeah and he says yeah i've got several of them laying out there so we in the middle of the rain sorted through them and yeah picked them out <laughs> what do you what do you charge you a um, little bit yeah it and wasn't horrible i mean we indiana farmers don't just give stuff away we know the value yeah i mean <laughs> i could get them a little cheaper if i drove to fort wayne but then i spent the time in the money yeah exactly house. exactly wasn't worth it <laughs> so this is primarily you know for our for our church family, but I know there's a, a tuning in. Some of the concerns we have during this time of, of shutdown and lockdown, as far as just the economy goes, um, I'm, I'm really concerned for some of the men in our church. Now, thank God, a number of them are still working. Yeah. Some, however, are not. And especially those who are self-employed or used to being self-employed, it just depends on how much of the business is upstream of you or downstream of you, how much work you have. I just, just this uh, week lost, not lost, it's gonna be postponed because they all wanna come and record at my studio, but they, they couldn't do it in April. It was ready to go, they'd already rescheduled. Oops, our guitar players work, something going on. So that happens. Mm -hmm. um, there is a, there's a couple in our church, he works in um, um, emergency services for uh, medical. And they're going to have to live apart for a little while just because he's exposed all the time. They've got a little girl. Also, there's a couple in our church expecting, literally as we speak, expecting their second <laughs> baby. Um, Heidi's dad, still down at Peabody, not able to get out. So we need to remember uh, our brothers and pray that uh, this thing opens up quickly. It's almost like this, seems like this disease is getting uh, um, preferred status. Oh, uh, well, so I have, I have some questions I'll ask you and uh, answer as you will. Um, so have, have you had to modify your work schedule? Uh, no, actually, my work's picked up. <laughs> what, so what do you do? I, I do, um, I'm out at, at uh, Riding Gear Lake by here. We mm -hmm. had a house that was completely gutted. Yeah. So a lot of the work that I probably would not have done i'm getting it's getting done yeah it's getting okay it's given yeah. to me to do it and so you do remodeling construction I do remodeling the summer i do a lawn care i yeah. keep it somewhat small i just got a call today from one of my clients that says we got a good friend and they want you to come and take care of the lawn until they think it's capable of coming up to the lake says, well there you go Great. okay you know praise god so <laughs> for for you this has been Pretty kind much. of business as usual yeah, it really yeah. has. I mean, you know, you try you to limit. You don't your work trips, in a trailer factory. Try to limit your trips to the store instead of showing up once a day. You know, I've just <laughs> said no. It's it's once a week, and that's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So, with a second question would be with a absolutely firm commitment to the sufficiency of God's written word, and you're not a prophet or the son of a prophet. No. Nope. All that being said. <laughs> What has God been showing you during this time? I've been for quite a while studying on God's sovereignty. Um, I can't imagine why, but okay. I mean, that was, when I got saved, that was the very first doctrine that I, I was taught very strongly. I've got a, yeah. I, I'd, I'd read a book by A.W. Pink on the sovereignty of God. Right, that's um, that's kind of the uh, 
right to the point. Yes. 20th century. And, but as a child of God, it, it was so encouraging. Right. It, you right. Know, a few years earlier, it would have really scared me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it really would. I mean, to right. know God is in absolute control of everything. Right. Whether we realize it or not. He is really in control of everything. He's either sovereign of all or sovereign of nothing. It's one so or the as, other. As R.C. Sproul said, there's not one maverick atom or electron in the universe uh, yeah, doing its own thing. Very much. Right. And while I've been studying that and praying one morning and and going to God concerning the, the virus and and really if you see things scripturally, you, you know God's, it's, it has to do with God's judgment. Right, right. But the thing that, and I guess I knew it, but yet there's a time when God kind of enlightens you to it, to see it different. And I was praying and it just hit me like a ton of bricks that, God, you shut the doors of our churches. Right. That's not, that's not man doing this. It's not the government. It's you using them. Right, but you right. control the government. So everybody in authority is put there by you. So it's that's right. And you shut the doors, and the church better take a good look. That that's one of the reasons I brought this. Um, the other night we were talking as uh, with Frank and Floyd and myself, and kind of trying to assess the situation and what some of our motivation was for not meeting as a church. And, uh, you know, everyone has the same amount of data out there, and it's all, sometimes I think it's purposefully confusing. And, Floyd, you mentioned something that a, a person had said to you that in God's good sovereignty yeah. and his providence did not take you off God. What, what did they say? This friend told me, he says, uh, if this is... This can't be of God because it's not done supernaturally. Okay. All right. And so what you said earlier about God shutting the doors of churches and using the means of civil governments to do so yeah. in, in, in a real sense. Yeah. Saying, hey, and, and there's societal pressure not to meet. You know, who do you think you are meeting together, putting all these people's health at risk? And it got me thinking about how that assumption, that, that's, a, that's a real fundamental worldview assumption that says, in essence, if God is going to do anything, then he will do it all by himself without your help. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> how many times in the Bible do we see God using a wicked, unworthy, impenitent, rotten, scoundrel, low-down, low-life, and says, well, it was my purpose to do this. Yep. This was my purpose. The Assyrian, right? What are they? Yeah. The, the axe in my hand. So what you just said about this is from God. I, I talked to somebody recently who's an older, older person. I, of course, I'm almost 60, so... My sense of time and age and relative old and young is all whacked out. I don't even know anymore. And anyone older than me is older. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, brother, but you are older. Um, and they were saying they were they were so careful in how they were trying to approach this. You know, the, the virus being well, God's sovereign. He's sovereign over all things. He now he didn't want this to happen, but and, and I didn't. I didn't really broach the topic that much. I was just thinking, well, actually, he did in one sense. You know, when we talk about God's will, is the coronavirus God's will? Well, in one sense, it is. Right. Yeah. Um, our, what's so handy at Syracuse Baptist Church is that we have a confession of faith, a historic confession of faith, that if someone wants to say, hey, Floyd, I was just wondering, where do you stand regarding a, B, or C, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. You can just say, it's funny you would ask that. Um, in my confession of faith, in my church's confession of faith, now this doesn't mean that every member here understands fully everything that's in the confession or even subscribes to every jot and tittle, although it's in general agreement. Um, 
Chapter two is God's decree. And this is, this is really where the rubber hits the road when we talk about God being in the plague or God sending. Mm-hmm. Even I've, I've been reading through first, first and second Samuel. You know where I'm going. God sent a evil spirit to torment Saul. And then David plays the guitar and he feels better, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've been reading Hosea. <laughs> oh, my goodness, yes. So, number one, from all eternity, God decreed all that should happen in time, and he did this freely and unalterably, consulting only his own wise and holy will. Okay, if you stop right there, first response is going to be, what? Uh, so if someone says, does God have anything to do with this? Well, according to the systematic theology of the London Baptist Confession of Faith, yeah. yeah. Yet in doing so, he does not become in any sense the author of sin, nor does he share responsibility for sin with sinners. Now, some people would say that's a contradiction. Mm-hmm. Neither, by reason of his decree, is the will of any creature whom he has made violated. Nor in the free working of second causes, aha, uh-huh, there we are. Yeah. God using civil authorities to shut the doors of his churches. Mm-hmm. Where in history did God ever judge the people who were worshiping him? Okay. Like you said, what book are you reading? <laughs> Jose. And it goes on. Rather, speaking of the free working of second causes like you and me and Chinese wet markets and research labs and presidents and uh, congresses, nor is the free working of these second causes put aside, rather established. Why? Because in all these matters, the divine wisdom appears as also does God's power and faithfulness in effecting that which he purposed. And the second goes on to explain this. I'm not going to keep on it. Other than God's decree is not based on his mere foreknowledge that under certain conditions, certain things will take place. But it's independent of all foreknowledge. So this isn't a matter of God's merely responding. No. You know, and the other thing I think is, is probably baked into the assumption that this person made was that, well, since we don't have the intimate knowledge of the exact sins, in other words, we don't have a prophet anointed by God to say, well, it is because of the sin of usury that I am bringing this. Well, then, therefore, we can't say that there's any judgment going on. And that's that's like saying, I have to have knowledge of the secret things of God before I'll make any general statement. Yeah. No, that won't happen, right? So one other question, and we'll we'll close this fireside chat. By the way, this is a good practice, I think, to have French roast. Mm. Mm-hmm. Getting a little cool there. Um, what is your probably your greatest concern or area of concern moving forward? It's it's May the 1st or the 2nd. The lockdown has been lifted. Boom. Well, if it's been lifted, I mean, I'd like to see the church go back to being gathered, but it's still got to do it with some wisdom in it. You can't just... Yeah. I mean, I, I, I've had, you know, one say, well, why don't you meet if you meet these standards? I said, because... Part of it is, I said, if one person is to break out with that, I said, it's a reproach against Christ because everybody's going to point the finger, those Christians. I said, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Yeah, and, and that's part of the, the, the tough call and exercising wisdom during this time is that you're mindful of that as well. Yes. See, there, there are three areas going on that... You know, we don't want to be constantly on the back foot as a church, always in response mode. You know, well, if you believe this, then how come? Um, yeah, give it, be prepared to give an answer, 
but don't do so in such a way that that doesn't call into account it's called the internal critique of the questioner's worldview and leave it just kind of floating as if they have all the objectivity I want to see go back to normal but I don't want normal to be how things always were and in other words listen if if it is God's prerogative to close the doors of his church for his purposes what does he always say? He says, you know, I want your heart. All these bulls and sacrifices. Yep. You worship me in vain. And one of the reasons that I read stuff like Sam Waldron, the regulative principle, is that, I'll be honest, in, in so much of the landscape of what calls itself Bible-believing, evangelical Protestantism, even in the Reformed world, there's an awful lot of novelty. And I think there are beliefs and practices that the apostles would have just been flummoxed by. Well, I mean, that's like the friend that asked me about how can this be of God? Pick up your Bible. Yeah. I mean, you know, the church right now, the doors are shut. Take that as... God saying, wake up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, seriously, do you really appreciate the gathering together? Well, who, who sinned that all those Galileans were killed in the... To, who's, whose fault was that? Who sinned that this man was born blind? It's like, yeah. Wrong question. Unless you repent, you'll likewise <laughs> perish. Amen. Well, you know, these are, these are trying times, and obviously there are so many unknown factors. How Really, how deadly bad is COV-19? What computer model are we going to follow? Although a lot of the dire predictions and the numbers are being daily walked back. Are there long-term civil liberty issues that we have just given up without a fight? I don't know. It could be. Here's what I want to close with, though. The fundamental basis of our hope is not in how this thing shakes out today, but it's in the promises that God has made to his people. Old Testament saints were saved through belief in the promises of God, in God. New Testament saints are saved by belief in the promises of God. Now they've been fulfilled. Back then they were yet to be fulfilled. One of the promises that God has made is that the knowledge of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the seas. There was a time in recent church history known as the killing times where men were being hounded from their houses all over Scotland. And even in the middle of that horrible, wicked time of persecution, these people said, take heart because the gospel will triumph. Jesus is king. He is reigning now. And I just wanted to read the, the words of a hymn that I obviously didn't have bookmarked. My bad. Here it is. This is from 1772. William Williams. Kingdoms wide that sit in darkness, grant them, Lord, the glorious light. And from eastern coast to western, may the morning chase the night, and redemption freely purchased win the day. That's what my hope is in. Even during this time where we, we don't want to set bad precedent by not meeting, or even doing online meetings. That I mean, this could people say, Oh, this is great. We're finding new creative ways. And I'm like, creative usually means a a golden calf at the foot of Mount Sinai. I don't want that. But neither do I want church to go back to same old, same old. We must reform, saints. we got to reform. We have to allow the word of God to regulate our beliefs and our practices. And I pray for a revival of God's people. I pray that we're here at Syracuse Baptist prepared 
I have personally received email correspondence from people saying, well, when this thing is over, I'm coming to church. Wonderful. Get ready. Get ready. <laughs> so, Christ is reigning, and God is sovereign. And as Floyd said earlier, when he first came to a realization of that glorious, fatherly sovereignty, it didn't frighten him or freak him out. It brought him comfort. And it should. God works all things together for good according to his purpose for those who are, are the called of God. Take heart. Stay uh, six feet away from me. Keep washing your hands. I hope this has been encouraging to you. Floyd, thank you for coming here. I'm glad to no be here. No handshake. <laughs> and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.